YouTube, we are back in my basement with another uh, floor joist issue here. Um, basically, uh, we, we bought this little house, um, we bought this little country home, and we love it. It was built in the 60s, so it's got a lot of character. There's a lot of weird things that are going on with it. But one of the weird things that is happening here is this uh, floor joist right here. Um, the previous owners added a bathroom upstairs, and this is right underneath the shower. Uh, and what they did was they notched all of this out. The reason why they did that was obviously to make room for the drain for the shower upstairs. The problem here is I've got a little bit less than what is a two by four um, supporting the weight of everything upstairs. People jumping in and out of the shower and in that bathroom um, and stuff. And what happened was I'm sure it was fine while they were here. Um, for a while, but anyways, it, it, I'm sure it worked out fine for them while they were here. The problem is over time is the floor got a little weird and it started to kind of bow in there. Um, so I come down here, I look around, I see this and I, I, I notice that it's, it's a slightly out of level and there is a significant chunk missing from this joist uh, to, you know, reduce its integrity of, of staying straight. Um, so. I don't have any formal experience in construction. So don't take my advice. I'm not a professional in any way. I'm just a random guy on YouTube showing the world how he solved an issue. I'm just a guy that, uh, you know, can see a problem and, you know, put something together and, you know, to make it work, you know. Anyway, I uh, I've, I've saw a bunch of other videos on YouTube about sistering the, uh, these beams together. Uh, basically, you go and get another dimensional piece of lumber. This is a two by eight by 12 and you stick it in right next to the existing beam, you put some glue in there, you shoot it with 100 million nails all up and down the side to make it essentially one big piece. Um, the problem that I had with that was I am limited on space. I can't fit a, a, uh, a two by eight over here on this side of the beam, or this side of the joist, I'm sorry, not the beam. On the right side, I couldn't get them flush together because on the other side of the house, I've got another joist that comes and rests on this side, rests on this side of this joist over the main beam that holds the whole house up. Um, so I couldn't get it all flush together. Um, so basically what I did was, I found which side was the, uh, the crown of the new piece of wood that I got. Basically what the crown was, like all these pieces of wood, they don't, they're not perfectly straight. Um, when you turn it on its side here you, and look down, you can kind of see, well this one you can kind of see is, you know, bent, but it, sometimes it bows, um, you know, this way when you look down there. So basically you want it to be, you want the middle of this piece of wood, you know, to hump up um, towards the subfloor and not the other way around. So you want that middle piece to be slightly taller than the edges. So that way it gives you the most support possible um, to your subfloor. I got the, the, you know, this two by eight by 12, turned it on its side, jammed up in there as far as I could. Um, and jammed it up in there as far as I could, worked around the, you know, some of the plumbing lines and the electrical and everything. And then I pulled it back and pushed it all the way up in there so that it's fitting the, uh, uh, I don't even know what you call that, um, you know, the rim of the house, I guess. Um, then what I did at that point was I picked the beam up, I jammed the top edge into the top corner of this, uh, joist and where it meets the subfloor. So I put it up on an angle like that so that my friction points were basically right here on the sill plate and over the main beam of the house. And what I did at that point is I just hit it with a rubber mallet like, you know, 50 times and got it up straight and everything. Um, and then to tie it all in together with the existing beam is, you know, I obviously cut out some blocks I drilled some holes, pushed in through some, put, got, got uh, pushed some lags through, and you know, drilled it all down tight with the uh, impact gun. And anyways, what this has done for me is now my floor is straight. It feels you know a lot more solid than it did before. It was kind of bouncy and wavy 
um, previously, but now, you know, now, now it feels a lot more solid. I'm a lot more comfortable with it. And yeah, all in all, I'm happy. And, and it only cost me, you know, really the money for the lag bolts and the wood and, you know, a couple, maybe not about two hours of time, you know, to, you know, to figure it out. Um, again, I don't have any formal knowledge or training in construction. I'm just an average guy that see, can see a problem and can use his hands to, to do it, um, well, to, to make something work from it. Um, my whole intent with making this video and my other videos is to help somebody, you know, be able to work on their own home. Um, or help somebody that may have a similar problem and see what I did to solve it and You know, hopefully they can you know save some time money and some headaches uh, Doing so and all and while doing while fixing their own problems uh, You know gain more confidence in Handling other problems down the road that may arise you know, when you buy an old home That's that's one thing you can count on is you're gonna have issues things are gonna things are gonna go bad again like this joist here is original to the house and this house was built in the 60s they they put out a huge notch i've got maybe like two and a half inches there um you know supporting the weight of the bathroom that anyway it it was wild if you found any value in this video if this video makes you uh feel a little bit more confident in you know handling your own problems i ask that you uh like and subscribe here um, it will help encourage me to, to make more videos like this in, in the future. So anyways, if you got a, if you got a split beam, don't know how to do it, I hope this video shed some light there.